Hey there! Today I thought we would have... That was really serious, and it was a deep sigh too. Dearly beloved, we have gathered here today, etc. No, it's actually not that bad. Today I thought I would do another one of those talk videos. It's been a while since I've done, uh, I've done one. And this idea was actually by Sian Chai, and I'm very sorry if I mispronounce your name. Um, the idea was, was very interesting. He or she, sorry, I'm not sure, um, suggested this idea and I, I thought it made a lot of sense. Also because the problem actually ties into something that's a very psychological thing. And as you may know, I am a psychologist, so I, I, I find these kinds of things very interesting. So what Sian Chai said was... The, the, there was no complaint, it was just a suggestion to talk about this, but what Sian Chai said was should we, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, should we be careful of reviewers who are particularly enthusiastic about very expensive pens, because if they have purchased those pens then maybe they are very enthusiastic because they are kind of justifying in their mind that they have purchased something that's very expensive and then they may be overly enthusiastic just because they just bought something that, that cost so much money. And that's actually a really interesting point. A really interesting point. Um, because I, I agree, uh, when you review something, especially when it is very expensive, there is a very interesting psychological phenomenon that comes into play. Something that you may or may not be very aware of, but that doesn't just apply to reviewing pens. It actually applies to buying pens, using pens, and pretty much everything in the world. So let me explain what this means. Um, Leon Festinger in 1957 coined a term called cognitive dissonance. Okay, cognitive dissonance. What does that mean? Cognitive dissonance is psychological stress that you experience when you hold two sort of opposing thoughts at the same time. Now that may sound a little bit abstract, so, so let me explain that a bit better. Let's assume you have bought a very expensive pen, okay? And what you define as expensive, of course, is up to you. But let's, let's make this pretty extreme. Let's say you have bought a pen that costs a full month salary for you. All right, not everyone would do this, but just, just go along with this example just for the sake of argument. Okay? You've bought this expensive pen. You spend an entire month's salary on it. Now, you can experience cognitive dissonance when you have two ideas in mind. One idea is... I really wanted this pen. But the other idea is, I just blew an entire salary for one month on this item. <laughs> Panic, right? I'm never going to make that noise again, just for the record. So you have two opposing ideas. I want this pen, but I'm also really freaked out because I just spent an enormous amount of money on it. And in Festinger's theory, you're now experiencing cognitive dissonance. Because on the one hand, you want it, but on the other hand, you know maybe you can't really afford it, maybe it was not the most sensible way to spend your money, maybe you experience stress because you also have whatever mortgage payments, rent, uh, car payments, heaven knows what you may have in your life, right? So, then, Festinger said, now what? How do you deal with this? How do you deal with the stress of this cognitive dissonance? Well, he came up with four uh, basic ways uh, to, to deal with it. Uh, the, f the first one is uh, to, to change your behavior or cognition. Now, my interpretation of that, that strategy uh, has always been uh, something like this. So if you if you change your behavior and cognition, you make a radical decision. So for example, you could say, okay, I am never ever buying a pen this expensive anymore. 
And that may give you some peace of mind because you think, okay, I did it this time, but that was the, maybe the first time, but in any case, it was the last time. I'm never doing this again, right? You have changed your behavior. As a result, you may experience less stress. The second thing you can do is you can um, justify your decision uh, by, by changing a conflict in cognition. So what that means concretely is that you can alter your thoughts by saying something or thinking something like, well, you know, it was a pretty expensive pen, but a pen that is this uh, beautiful, this exclusive, uh, that writes this well, would of course cost a lot of money. All right, so now you have changed the upsetting thought of, I spent so much money on this. You have justified it to yourself. And as a result, cognitive dissonance is reduced and you experience less stress. Third strategy you can use is you can justify uh, your, your stress or your, your cognitive dissonance, maybe your, your, your problematic thought by adding a new cognition, a whole new thing. So you add a whole new thought and the thought could be something like, well, it was very expensive, but I can always sell it later. Right? This is a whole new thought. It doesn't justify that you have purchased it by saying, well, it's very exclusive, it's very whatever. You add something new to it. Sort of an escape strategy. But I can always do this. I can always do this. <clears throat> and then the fourth, <clears throat> excuse me, and I would say most dangerous way to deal with cognitive dissonance is quite simply to, to ignore or deny conflicting information. So you have this conflict, I have bought the pen, but it costs a lot of money. You can just change your thought and say, actually it wasn't that expensive. I mean, it could be a lot worse. I mean, yes, it was one month's salary, but imagine I would have bought a whole new car. That would have been way more expensive, right? Now, I think the, if we go back to the original question, which is, should we be careful of this when people review very expensive pens that they have purchased? Um, then this second line of reasoning, which is changing your conflicting information, is the most dangerous one, right? So to bring that back, back to mind, that is when you say something like, well, but a pen of this beauty or this exclusivity or this writing quality or this whatever would be very expensive, right? It would, it would be because it is so special and so exclusive, write so nicely, etc. It, it's justified. I've justified my thoughts in purchasing this expensive pen. Now, I think that, to be honest, all of this kind of boils down to one thing and I dedicated a whole video to this. This all, this all boils down to the fact that you have to be a critical consumer of anything, but that includes fountain pen reviews. So if a reviewer is talking about an expensive pen and he or she is extremely enthusiastic about it, cannot mention a single negative then bear in mind that it is indeed possible that they were experiencing cognitive dissonance and are trying to reduce that, are trying to justify their purchase. Now, I would love to say I have never done that in the past, but I probably have. There have been expensive pens that I have purchased, that I have reviewed, and I was very enthusiastic, and a year later, whatever period of time, I decided to sell it again. Well, if I was that enthusiastic, why would I sell it? But you know what? Too bad. This is part of being a human. This is the human condition. This is how we work. And nobody is completely impervious to these kinds of psychological factors. You may think you are. You're deluding yourself. No one is. We're all susceptible to it because that's how the human mind works. Speaking from personal experience, I try to always be as objective as possible. And every once in a while, the discussion resurfaces of if companies send you pens, you cannot be objective. I really disagree with that. Because I find myself being more critical if a company sends me something. For example, Joost Appelboom from Appelboom Pennen in the Netherlands lends me 
note what I say here, lends me a lot of expensive pens. I haven't purchased them. He lends me a lot of pens. I find myself being quite critical of those pens. Maybe more so than if I would have bought them myself. The reason being that if I have bought them, I probably wanted them. I was probably really interested in them because I have picked them for myself. But if I get sent a bunch of expensive pens that I might not have selected in the first place, I'll review them, but I have all the more reason to be critical, because I actually may not particularly care for them. So in my mind, it's easier to be critical in those instances. And then there always is the interesting argument that some people present of, yes, but if you're not critical, they won't send you pens anymore. Yes, yeah, so what? Then they won't. Yoast is a person, to stick with that example, who has always been extremely understanding of that. Who has always said, oh, you didn't really like that. No, okay, I understand. Right? So the relationship that I have with a person like that is very, very good. And I know that I can be honest, I know I can be critical, etc. But I'm honest and I'm critical with any pen I review. So it's not a special mindset, it's something I always do. And whether I can keep the pen or not keep the pen, it doesn't really matter. Because my job as a reviewer is to try and let go of as many of my personal feelings as I can and be as objective as I can. Because otherwise it would be a pointless review. So I always try to be very objective. And it doesn't matter whether it's a $5 pen or a $5,000 pen, so to speak. What matters is that you strive for objectivity. And, to come back to what I, the, the original topic here, I would almost say that it is harder to be very critical if I've purchased something myself. Because again, then I have purchased that, and I have selected that, and I'm probably biased because I love it. Right? Take the LB5. That's a pen I, I actually, Aziz, Aziz gave it to me, but I mean, we have purchased that ourselves. That's not a gift. That's not a gift from a company. That's not something from... Companies were not involved. Classic Pens was not involved. I love that pen. So for me, it's harder to be critical of that than of something that, say, Applebaum lends me and that's a similar price. Because that's something I've not selected, whereas the LB5 I have selected for myself. Food for thought. Okay, Sian Chai, I hope I have not butchered your name too terribly. I also hope I have addressed your issue of selecting uh, expensive pens and, and how to what happens to that in the sense of reviews. Any and all thoughts are always welcome. Just keep it respectful. It's just courteous, all right? You're always welcome to disagree or to agree. Most important thing, is that you form your own opinion. You think about things. You think about whether you agree or disagree. Welcome to disagree. Just do it in a respectful manner. Having said all of that, I wish you a very Merry Christmas. Not that Christmas is close, but just in case you watch this around Christmas, a very Merry Christmas. In it. All right, I hope this was useful, and um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.